partido blanco, lo, la diferencia entre la ley y la amnistía. Eh... Solamente puedo hablar de las consecuencias jurídicas, ¿no? De estar en eso, no. A mí yo catastrofismo no juego, tampoco creo que sea que no vaya a pasar nada. The Expire Act passed in 1986 was possible, possible because the Blanco party, in a way, came to rescue the government. Why did you and your party elaborate the law, vote it, and now support it in this referendum? Our party is not in power, but the party in power, the Colorado party, has, has, hasn't got an operating majority in either of the houses of the parliament. So, any important law needs the support of other parties. Uh, the Blanco party, my party, has been always very tolerant towards this kind of attitudes. And we think, and we thought in that moment, that the country needed a pacification. And thus, we paid a very dear cost for helping the government, but we were really not helping the government, but helping the country to heal and end all the turmoil of the past years. So we assumed that responsibility because we thought it was good for the country, as we did with the other laws we voted on the amnesty of the Tupamaros and the other laws that closed the time of the tyranny or dictatorship. Why do you say that you assumed a very dear cost? Because it's known that inside the party we have a big majority on behalf of the law, but not a total acceptance of it. An important part, 20% or 30% of the party, is against this kind of solution. Yeah, that, that would lead to the other question. No? The, the Blanco party has chances of getting to government next year with, so. with the elections in November. How is it possible that a party in such a situation that could be government in a year's time is strongly divided in an issue of these characteristics? Well, our parties are very similar to the parties in the United States. Sometimes you get crossing votes. Some Democrats cross the lines towards the Republicans and vice versa. So it's common in our political system. And even in the Colorado party, not, ev not everybody is uh, for the law some uh, members of the House are against the law. So I don't think it would bother the future of the party. This w will end on the 16th April, and the country has enough time to think about the next government from April to till November. Uh, Blanco sympathizers, as compared to Colorados or Frente Amplista, seem to vote more on personal decision rather than follow the party instructions on whether to vote yellow or green. How does this affect or how does this condition your defense of the law? Well, in a country which knows how to vote, we have been voting for the whole 20th century and we know what the free secret ballot is. The leadership goes up to a certain point. There, then there you leave people in the voting booth alone with their conscience. I have assumed the responsibility of trying to show the way, but I cannot compel people to vote. That is the role of a leadership in the uh, democratic system. So I'm doing my, my campaign, giving my reasons to why I voted the law and I want people to support it in the plebiscite. Uh, I don't know the outcome, but uh, I suppose that the big majority of my followers in the eventual election of November, or in the election of November, will, will eventually uh, support me in this issue. Most political groups refer to the Expiry Act as an amnesty. Would you consider that it is effectively an amnesty? Well, technically, in terms of barristers and lawyers, there is a difference. Amnesty comes from amnesia or oblivion or forgetting. This law doesn't use the word forget or amnesty. It says that the right of the state to punish has precluded. That's the technical name. Preclusion of the possibility of uh, uh, proceeding with the legal uh, 
actions. So, in the common sense, it is a kind of amnesty, not technically. Defenders of the Green Vote claim that uh, the, the law uh, contravenes certain international agreements signed by Uruguay on, on human rights. Would you consider that if the law is maintained, this would affect the international prestige or image of Uruguay? I don't think so. You know, the international community have certain bending standards, so perhaps it can bend the standards in this time also. But it would be a delicate issue anyway. If people want to keep this issue alive, they can do it for the next 30 years. This was the end of 20 years of turmoil that began with the Tupamaros killing and robbing and bombing in a country that was peacefully organized. Then came the dictatorship. When this uh, Senate and House voted the law of amnesty towards the Tupamaros and this law towards the military, we tried to preclude or close a long and difficult time of our history. If people want to go on fanning the flames, you can always do it, but I think the great majority of the country wants to think about the future and to forget all this past. My, myself and my person, I had a bombing from the Tupamaros and I was jailed and hooded by the military during 1973. So in my own person, I've seen the face of violence and I don't want these things to come back. I just want to forget them. Well, if not forget them, leave them behind. But perhaps I cannot forget. But leave them behind, yes. This would be a more personal question. One of the, uh, in case of the triumph of the yellow vote, among other things, one of the situations that we will never be finally investigated or cleared up is the assassination of two mem members of parliament, Senmar Miguelini and Gutierrez Ruiz. How does this affect you personally as a member of parliament yourself? First, the, from the point of view of uh, legal technique, it's not that way because the, the law we are voting upon now, I don't know how you call it in English, the, lay, the, the expiry act, uh, allows for the prosecution of all the actions that were not taken in um, order of battle or whatever you call it, military. I mean, uh, it only tries to forget or mm, denies the prosecution when orders were given in the fight against the guerrillas or subversives. But all actions that were not taken in the line of command can, can be investigated. And that was put there because, amongst others, the death of uh, Selmar Michelini and uh, Hector Gutierrez Ruiz, Ruiz, the latter a very dear friend. So the, the law is not a blanket that covers everything. It just leaves uh, open ways to go on with investigation in the actions we were taken for profit or the uh, unlawful conduct was taken for personal profit and the actions that were taken without the orders of the legal commanders of the Army, Navy or Air Force. There has been no uh, action taken on, on these subjects since the approval of the law. There, is a, there, there hasn't been any action, but it's in the law, it's written, and it's a, a, a law of the land. What consequences would the, a, a victory of the Green vote have for the country? Well, I'm not a, a prophet, and I don't like to. In politics, you must play or... Uh, judge on realities and not on hypotheses. From the legal point of view, it's the only one I can speak about because I, I don't know what can happen in fact. But in the legal uh, situation will be this. Uh, the judges will go on with the, with the actions and uh, a great discussion will begin if uh, between those that say that the plebiscite, if it's green, has simply abrogated the law, but has annulated the law. The difference in very common terms is if it's an annulation, 
there never was a law. If it's a nullification or if it's a, an abrogation, it's abrogated from the plebiscite to the future. It makes quite a difference because the pardon or the forgetting, or forgetting has already been granted if it's only a, an abrogation. So that will lead to a tremendous and long and very erudite discussion of legal terms. What can happen, in fact, I cannot say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, sorry.